it's Catherine Nicholson here from the virtual training team. Okay, so we get approached by organizations all the time who have had a go at moving into virtual training because they're convinced that it's a good idea, but haven't really understood the nuances of how you virtualize training um, compared to face-to-face -face training specifically to work in that virtual environment. We were approached by a retail organization, Global, who they'd had virtual training delivered from an external provider um, internally and loved it. And because the external provider did a great job, they also made it look easy. And so they thought we can do this ourselves. So the, the team of trainers started to deliver virtual training and it didn't quite work. They fell into a trap that lots of people do in thinking that you can just take your face-to-face -face content, deliver it on a virtual platform and it will work. The shame of it was some internal um, employees already were unconvinced that virtual training would work. They expected it to be quite a passive experience, that maybe the technology wouldn't work out. And so when the trainers delivered the training and that's what happened, then they'd reinforce those negative expectations as well. So the recovery job was, was twofold. It was one, it was about building the confidence of the trainers to be able to design and deliver virtual training, but also to deal with the fact that a lot of employees had had a bad experience of virtual training and needed to be reconvinced as to how they could make it work. So five things in particular that we did with this organization is first of all, tip one, find the right platform. There are loads of platforms out there right now that you can use for virtual training. The great news is that they're all in competition, so they're improving the whole time. So it's important to find a platform that works for you. A lot of organizations are going with Microsoft Teams right now because it's part of um, a platform that they're using every day. So participants have that comfort level in this area. Um, but also it's, it's an improving platform. Um, this particular organization went with Zoom, which is our current favorite. And, and we showed them how to use it and really use the functionality in a way that makes the workshops that they were running really interactive. Tip two is to get trained up. So we worked with the trainers to build up their confidence and their skill levels in how to deliver and design virtual training that's really interactive, it's engaging, and it's, it's fit for purpose for those virtual environments. The feedback that they got as soon as they started to roll out the training in this new way was really positive. People were saying things like, wow, that was way more interactive than I expected. The time really flew, really powerful. Um, tip three is to think about your comms. So how do you position virtual training with employees, participants? So a mistake that they were making, we discovered, was to say, hey everyone, I know we'd really like to do face-to-face -face training, but right now we can't because of lockdown, so we're going to have to make do with virtual. What's that saying? It's suggesting that virtual training is the poor relation to face-to-face -to -face training. So thinking about that positioning of this is great, it's a great opportunity, it's super interactive, we can be trained from our, you know, our kitchen, from our desk, wherever it may be, positioning to create that right expectation for participants is really important. The fourth thing that we did was to practice. So they'd been through all of our trainer trainer program um, and were feeling you know, much more confident, but they needed an opportunity to try out their new skills. And we, we set some space, virtual space up for them to practice, get feedback, play, make mistakes that they could learn from. So what you don't want to do is have the first time you ever deliver virtual training to be in a live environment. Ideally, you want it to be in a practice environment um, because often you Often people think they know what they're doing, but until they actually do it and make those mistakes um, and learn from them, they've not quite got there. So it's, it just means that the first time you deliver it for real, you get it right first time on time. And then the fifth tip uh, to share with you that we did with this um, organization is to really work at how we virtualize content. As I said earlier, just lifting slides from a face-to-face -face deck and delivering them virtually just might not work um, as well. 
So we suggest things like building in really specific slides that have, say, questions for discussion on, or key tips, or instructions on how to run a breakout session, um, how to walk participants through the, the platform. So really thinking about converting the content and the process and the deck um, and the experience and virtualizing it for the virtual environment. And they're off and running, they're doing great to the point where some people have actually said in the organisation, why would we do face-to-face -face training if we can get it right virtually, which is what they're doing right now.